So you may have noticed in the last few videos, I've got a new room. Yes, I'm in a new studio, which got me thinking, at some point, I'm gonna to have to retire. Well, it's not that I'm desperate to retire, obviously, but recently I had a birthday, which is starting to creep me up to an age where I'm feeling pretty old and feeling like all the old guys that I used to work with when I first started. And getting a new studio kind of makes me think, oh my God, not another studio. How many studios can I work in? Essentially what I'm saying is I'm feeling a little bit old. I don't know how long this is gonna go on for. So what I've decided to do with this channel, I'm not giving it up, I'm going full pelt into it. I am going to do three videos a week, no holes barred, not holding anything back. I'm gonna tell you everything that I know because ultimately, like I say, I am getting older, I am gonna retire, and I've got all this knowledge in my head that I've been doing for the past 25 years. And so what's the point in it being in my head? If I got hit by a bus tomorrow, I haven't given it to anyone. So there's no point in learning it in the first place. So every week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. GMT, I'm gonna be giving you everything I possibly know about mastering, mixing, production, sound, everything. So if you wanna know anything, just ask me. I'm here, I will answer all of your questions and I'll show you with demos and stuff. This is one of the reasons why I've built this studio too, because I've got a studio, it's a massive space. This is only like half of it, what you see, and it's gonna be a place where I can film and I can do these videos three times a week because it'll be set up permanently for me to be able to do that. So yeah, the front is built. However, the back of the room is looking appalling. It's got loads of temporary bass traps around so it's not too live. I do like the room to be quite dead. It's a bit lively at the back, which is fine. The room is 28 feet long, so it's got plenty of space. It's got 14 foot high ceilings, so it's got loads of room. So that's not really a problem for the speakers that I've got. And I've also got trin off, so that helps to sort of sort the room out a little bit. But this looks terrible. So if you wanna see me make the bass traps in the back, if you wanna see how that's done, make sure you like the video below. If you wanna see the videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. GMT, then make sure you subscribe and press the bell below because then you'll get notified when the videos come up. And as I say, I'm gonna be showing you everything that I know. So now I've updated you on everything that's going on, let's get on with today's tip. So this is a super simple way of finding the right EQ for the right place where you want it to be. So how I did this in my olden times as uh, when I was totally hardware, now obviously I'm in the box a bit more, but when I'm using an analog EQ like this Masalek here, what you would do is you would put the gain all the way up and then you will put the Q to about 14 on here, which is kind of tight. It's quite a kind of tight Q that you use on a parametric EQ. And then what you do is you'll just sweep the frequencies to find out which one, whereabouts that sort of either annoying one is or where you wanna kind of take that frequency away. So by adding it, you kind of, it over accentuates it and then you can then drop it out a little bit and then you can play with the cue to like time that up. So let's get in the computer. I'll show you how that's done now with a little fab filter EQ that I've got. So here we are in RX with my assistant Matt's track again. The reason being that copyright reasons for YouTube, they're a bit tight. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna show you so how I sweep the EQ to find any resonant frequencies. Now, in this track, there is a resonant frequency. Let's pull up the EQ. So here we are in the fab filter. So as I said, what I'd do in the analog world is put a tight Q on it, but within the digital world, you can get much tighter than you can in the analog world. So you can actually really strip, fine strip, frequencies out, it's easy for me to say. So I've got this in linear phase in high because that's how I like it. And I've put this gain right up. This is quite extreme, but you'll see that it does work. Now, this is something I would probably suggest doing in mix stage rather than mastering stage, but it does happen if you've got a mix that you can't get back and you need to get a resonant frequency out, this is how I do it. So um, let's uh, play the track. I'll show you how to find the frequency first and then we'll take it away. So, um. so we put this right up and then we go through and find the resonant frequency. Okay, 
hear that there? Honky. Honky, that is there. So that's what we're listening for. So we've got the honky bit going on. So now we've found that frequency. What we do, let's strip that out. It's about 771, I think, something like that. So let's strip that right down. We're on a super tight cue. And uh, let's preview out again. Now, where you're listening to in the track, so that you can log into it, you'll hear what I mean, is kind of, it's where the piano's playing. So it's above the vocal, but what happens is, is what you're listening for is, you'll hear that the vocal suddenly cleans up because we got rid of that resonant frequency that's, that should have been got rid of in the mix, then um, we can actually hear the difference. So let's just play that. So that's, this is with it out. So that super cleans it up, as you can hear. I wouldn't probably go as radical as this because there are other things going on in that area, but you can hear the massive difference that makes and how it really cleans up that vocal area. This can be great for doing in drums, it can be great for doing in bass area, really good for stripping some frequencies so that you can get some distance in between the bass and the kick. So that's pretty handy for doing that. But as I say, the best thing to do is sweep it first to find the frequency that you want. You can do it much better in the box than you can out of the box. And then once you've found that frequency, you can duck it. And then that means you can actually clean it up. And then you can put some EQ around it so that you kind of polish it a bit. But first of all, you need to get rid of those resonant frequencies. So that's how you find the frequencies that are annoying you and ripping them out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. There's going to be more tips like this every week, Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 6 p.m. GMT. So make sure that you press the bell below so that you're notified every time I upload one. And don't forget to give me a little like at the bottom because that uh, helps the algorithm get me higher up and shows other people these tips too. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.